Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Toddler Time. I have a new friend today that I want to introduce to you. This is Christy Hancock, and Christy is our new uh, children's library specialist, or our other children's librarian. Miss Candace went into full retirement. You'll still see her around Hewitt, but Miss Christy has joined us, and we are so happy that she's here. She was a librarian at Spiegelville Elementary, and I've already met some students that mm -hmm. have come in our library. They're so happy they're going to see her. So, Miss Christy, we're glad to have you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, parents, uh, in our toddler time lesson today and early literacy, we are talking about onomatopoeia. Isn't that a fun word? Onomatopoeia. And you're like, Miss Gay, why would you do that? Well, I want to teach you about this because it is an important literary device used in our uh, children's literature, and it's for a reason, okay? It's a word that names a sound, but also sounds like that sound. Confusing? Well, it's like beep, beep, honk, honk, crack, pop, boom, those kind of words. But we first uh, see those words in our babies and toddlers as we teach them animal sounds. So, moo, meow, oink, woof, those are, those are our onomatopoeia sounds that we teach our children. And it really has a, a very important function in our language. Do you know that we find onomatopoeia in all languages? And if you think about when you're communicating with someone that doesn't know your language, you do things like that, and or, or honk honk, or to, to relay what you're trying to talk to them about if you don't share a language. So anyway, that being said, um, with babies and toddlers, we, naturally seem to go to onomatopoeia because uh, children are so attracted to animals. If you have animals in your house or animals on TV, or you might notice how babies are attracted to other uh, children. They'll watch them because they're all animated and all fast. And so they love animals and that's a good way to relate to the kids and have to start with onomatopoeia. Um, they learn association through this. When babies are young, I mean, as soon as they're born, they're hearing things. They can't talk yet, but they hear. And so they hear mom's voice, dad's voice, and they learn to associate this sound coming from this person, this person, or from the dog, or from the cat. And um, let's see, what else do we want to say about that? Oh, they're important building blocks. You start with woof, then it can build into sentences. Dog woofs, dog barks, cat meows. So that's why it's important. So anyway, we have a fun book today, and our book is Slop Goes the Soup. And this is a noisy warthog word book. I have, a, I have an animal sounds one back here, but this one's a little bit more appropriate for the toddlers today. So this book is written by Pamela Edwards, and Henry Cole is the illustrator. Cute warthog. goes the warthog. Slop goes the soup. Slither go the hoofs. Whoops. Wobble goes the birdcage. Crash goes Uncle Fred. Oh, uh -oh. Clatter goes the table. Whoosh goes the teddy bear. Plop goes the pudding. Giggle, 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 giggle. Slurp go the tongues. <laughs> That's why warthogs clean up. Rattle goes the bucket. Splash goes the water. Swish goes the mop. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Ooh, very exciting. <gasps> Ding dong, goes the doorbell. Look, they have friends coming over. Gulp, goes the soup. Uh-oh. Achoo! Uh-oh, it looks like we might start all over again. Isn't that a fun book? I thought that was cute. So the word for the day, automatopoeia. Bye-bye. You know what? I forgot hello, friends, and goodbye, friends. So I guess I'll just say goodbye, friends. Are you ready? Because it's time to say goodbye. And Miss Christie's going to come do it with me.
Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Have a great day. Bye.